Are Arsenal about to green light two major attacking additions in the summer transfer window? And Lord knows we need them both. Let's get into it. Welcome to the channel with Jay from Jay Ferguson TV. Hit that subscribe button and hit that like button. So we are dealing with the aftermath of that Bayern Munich defeat yesterday. And so much change in a week of football, you know. We beat Brian the other day, you know, 3 three nil at home. We're top of the league. Destiny's in our own hands. We're playing good football. Everyone's thinking, yep, we're going to go on and do it. We're going to beat Bayern Munich. And look, draw the first leg, then lose to Aston Villa, then return to buy Munich's place and then now we're knocked out and now we're scrambling. Now we're two points behind um, Man City in the Premier League. It appears to be we've got numerous players, especially our attacking players, out of form. And everyone's got questions over a lot of players. We've got questions over our goalkeeper. We've got questions over our left back. We've got questions over our midfield. We've got questions over our wingers and we've got questions over our striker and even our manager. That's how quick things change in football. Now we're going for a mini disaster. But we've got to find the solutions to kick on, right? We know a big part of our issue has been, especially the first half of the season, not being clinical. A ton of chances we've wasted. Even if you look at that Aston Villa game, that first half, we should have easily been 2-0 up, right? You look at that Bayern Munich game, okay, they weren't clear-cut chances, but there was enough half chances there. There was enough sort of opportunities and potentials for goals there, but we just looked toothless. So, super pleased to see that we've been linked with these two... Isak and Elise, definitely two players that I rate highly. Um, I especially rate Isak. I think he just got that natural flair, that speed, that movement, that, ter that Thierry Henry-esque type finishing. Now, I'm not saying he's anywhere Henry's level. I'm just saying his movements, his patterns, his body language how he shapes up for his finishes, it reminds me a lot of Henri. And that's exciting as an Arsenal fan because, you know, Henri came to us as a raw talent, a winger, and he got moulded in to be the best striker to play in Premier League history. So it's nice to see that there's a guy who's got those certain little nuances about him what reminds you of Henri and you just never know what that potential could end up being. So for me, first things first for Isak is we just need to take a look at Gabriel Jesus's record. Now, Arsenal fans, be honest with yourself. All of you thought we was bringing in um, Jesus, 45 million, great price, we all thought that Arte was going to get his arm around him, give him the number nine, make him feel like the superstar. You're going to be starting every single game. We all thought we create enough and he will eventually go on and kick on and get 20 goals a season, become a 20 goal a season striker. I would say 95% of the Arsenal base would have thought that. And it hasn't happened. Gabriel Jesus has played... 48 games for Arsenal and he has scored 15 goals now you could say oh but he had his knee injury at Arsenal doesn't count 21-22 for Man City 8 season before that 9 14-7 13-7 the guy is not a clinical striker He's a very talented footballer. He's got great link-up play. He's got great um, defensive responsibility about him. He puts in a shift. That is amazing. But we had a lot of that in Lacazette. Work rate, link-up play, but where's the goals? We need the goals. So, 
when you compare that to Isak, Isak has played 46 games since joining Newcastle and he's already scored 27 goals. 27 goals and a two assists in, in 46 appearances. He just got to the Prem. Gabriel Jesus has been playing in the Prem since 2016. He's been there eight years. And he's not even in, ever been there sniff. The closest he came was 2019-20 season where he got 14 goals. And you're playing for Man City. At the time when they were just running away with the league. And you still can't get yourself 20 goals. Then he comes out and says, you know, Goal scoring is not one of my strongest things. Like that just tells you the whole mentality of the guy. And you just you just know this is the reason why Pep goes, you know what, bro? I like you, but you're not good enough. Who rocks up and buys him? Arsenal, of course. So Isak for me, hundred percent will be an amazing sign in. I know the asterisks next to Isak's name is always all by his injury pro. So let's dig a little bit deeper into that. Pause. So, this season so far, he's missed 10 games for Newcastle. Okay. Two groin injuries. Okay. So he's missed 10 games so far with a groin injury. Last season, he missed 16 games for Newcastle. Five problem. Okay, before that, his injury record wasn't bad. You know, 21-22 season for Real Sociedad, four games miss. Um, four games miss. So, you know, even his time, during his time at sort of Dortmund, it was like two, three, four, five games, like miss. So, I think... The worst one was last season with the 16 games miss. And this season he's on 10 so far. But I kind of put that down to the transitioning into a lot more competitive league, a lot more physical league. How much players have we seen? Thomas Boy, who come from a slower league into the Prem. And it's like their body just not primed for it. So that potentially is the issue with Isak. I don't think his injury record is as scary as some people make out. 10 games, okay, if he goes and plays the rest of the remaining 6-7 games of this season, okay, he's played 28 games. But the goals, I generally think... At 100 million, that is a player that Arsenal definitely should be looking to sign. Especially when you've seen how toothless we've been at the beginning of the season. And especially, you know, the last two games, Aston Villa and Bayern Munich. You know, we should have easily have won those two games if we had someone who wants to put the ball in the back of the net. Now... We can't get caught up on this, oh, we've got Havertz. Listen, Havertz had a good six weeks. He had a little purple patch. He's not at the required level of what we need at Arsenal. He's not. So, and he can't play midfield. Forget about it. Havertz should just become the backup player to Isak. But we need to go and get a striker who wants to who's got the capability to score 20 plus goals a season. We need it. It's a must because Arsenal have a great way of covering up the cracks. And we, we, we've been doing this for years where, yeah, our defence is not great, but, you know, we had Henri, we had Alexis, we had Van Persie, what scored a ton of goals, what offsets, how bad we were defensively. Now we sort of fix that up and... The cover-up is, we still scored a lot of goals, but the cover-up comes, we destroy 
smaller teams, we do that very well. When they open up, when we get early goal, we get confident, we get expansive, we score goals. I don't think our goal scoring is a true reflection of really our capability attacking wise. Why? Saka's been poor this season. Uh, Marinelli's been poor this season. Havertz is Havertz. Gabriel Jesus is Gabriel Jesus. Uh, Mine Odegaard started off the season slow. He's came into form since the Dubai break. But be honest with yourself. Have we looked sensational game after game after game in big games as well? We destroy the smaller teams we do. But when it matters, those big games, when we need that goal scorer, we don't have one. So for me, Isak... No brainer. We need to get him in 100%. Now, Elise. I think if you could get Elise in for 50, 60 million, I think that's a great signing. And I've said it on previous videos. For me, Elise is a better technical skillful footballer than Saka but Saka is more efficient than Elise now is that down to training is that down to the level that Saka's playing at versus Elise or is Elise just one of those type of players who are just super skillful but you just don't know what you're going to get from in game from game I generally think if you drop Elise a high level I think he will rise to that level. I have no doubt. I think he will rise to that level. And ultimately, if you've got the capabilities and you've got the skill set, and he's still young, 22, 23, right? I think that's the type of profile player that 100% we should be bringing in. But I don't think we're going to go in for Elise. Because I think... Arsenal will potentially look at him as too much of a threat to Saka. And that's our small club mentality. We're a big club, but we've got small club mentality. Because it's, oh God, we can't bring him in because we can't drop Saka. We're a big club. There should be competition for places. Saka has been stinking up for the whole season. He is 22 and he has guaranteed first name on the sheet. No matter what he'd done the previous game. That can't be if you're at an elite club. You should have that pressure of, boy, if I mean playing well, maybe Elise is going to get the star. And, you know, the, the manager is saying out the team and you're not really sure. And you're like, right wing, hearts being, is it me? Is it Elise? That's what Saka should be going through, but he's not. Saka rocks up to the change room. Yeah, no, I'm starting. Who else hasn't played there? Reese Nelson? So we 100% need to rectify that right wing. We 100% need to get competition for Saka. Um, I think Elise is an interesting one because he could play all across the front three, left, central, all right. He could even play in a 10. And as we've seen, Mikko Arter loves those players who can occupy three, four positions because he sees it as one signing, by actors for. He loves those type of signings. So I definitely think Elise would be a great addition. Out of the two, I think that's the more less likely one for the Saka factor and the potential price. Um, you know, Crystal Palace has probably went up to 60, 65 million for him. I can't see Arsenal splurging that on Elise when they've got Saka. Um, so I think we'll probably go for a slightly cheaper profile winger to compete with Saka, wrongly or rightly. Um, but Isak, I think that has a lot of legs. I would love to see it. Um, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. Would you take Isak? How much would you pay for him? Elise, is he better than Saka? How much would you pay for him? Let me know down below. Hit the subscribe button and hit that like button on your way out. And I'll see you all again soon. Peace. And three, 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 three.